Hello, this is Daniel Fasnacht. Welcome to the SMT tutorial of the Telluride Workshop 2010. I'm going to show you how to solder uh, this nice USB board from Stack Foundry, copper board. It contains a 32 bit microcontroller from Atmel, which is perfectly suited for any kind of uh, peripheral device control or uh, sensor data acquisition. First of all, I'm going to show you the tools we're using now to start this. Um, of course, we have some kind of a solder iron here. Uh, I'm soldering at about 325 degrees Celsius or about 620 Fahrenheit. This is a very nice temperature for this solder paste you have. It's a leaded solder paste with a quite fine needle. Uh, of course we have a paste dispenser and if we press the foot pedal for this dispenser we hopefully have paste coming out. There we go. In case you have a mess, simply clean this with a little bit of paper. Then next of course what you need is tweezers and what you have here to look at this thing is a nice stereo zoom microscope Olympus SZ40 and a cold light source with fiber optic attachments which you can hear humming in the background. Let's start with something simple with a ferrite bed L1 here. I have this thing still packed, so let me get it. So, this is typical packaging of SMD devices, which is usually uh, uh, wrapped around the reel. On one side, you have this plastic cover, which you should be able to remove tweezers. And then, if you turn the thing, we have our ferrite bed here. Back to the board. Ferrite bed will go here. If your components stick to your tweezers, usually it's just because your tweezers are dirty. So clean them some with some paper or if necessary with some alcohol or isopropanol. Now first I'll place paste on this side. Then take the tweezers, which are still dirty, into my left hand and the solder iron into my right hand. You can already see the component isn't flat, so just take the iron and push it down. Then we position it and solder. Components in place to clean up the stuff around here and just collect it with the solder iron. Second side is simpler because the component is already in place. Just put some paste and solder it. Just make sure you're quick enough not to heat the other side too because then you're going to have a your component moving around. Next thing we solder is uh, R4 here. This small 0603 resistor, 220 ohm. I prepared this thing already, unpacked it already. You can see, you might be able to see, it's not very clear. The labeling is 221. One is the exponent, so 2, 2 and 1, 0 gives 220 ohm. 
Now the paste again. You can see here that this pad of the resistor is connected to the ground plane of the board, which means that we probably have to heat a little bit longer to get the plane hot. Now the plane isn't hot yet, and all the solders on the iron and the resistor. Now let's hope it's starting to stick. Let me remove this for a moment. So now we see that we actually have liquid in the plane. So this should give us a good solar joint, even though it looks dreadful. Sorry for shaking the camera out. Second slide. A lot easier. Next component we'll use is a capacitor. Namely C5, which is 100 nanofarad. This little guy. We have C5 here. Again, we start with the painful ground plane size. Site. Works a lot better than before. It's good. There we go. I'm not happy with that one. Next thing will be the power LED here. Cathode is marked on the board with the basically the direction the arrow is pointing at. On the LED you can see green markers on this end on both sides of the LED. That's the cathode marker of the LED. Put the base first. to think properly and good. LEDs are a little bit heat sensitive so you should make sure you don't solder too long on them. And last component for the first session is our USB connector. You can see it has the five pins of the mini USB Type-B connector, then these four pins for uh, fixing it mechanically to the port and to connect to the shielding, and these two small knobs which go into these holes for positioning.
because of the positioning knobs it's actually pretty simple to get this thing in place here for the shielding the stuff is so big we could even use solder wire instead of paste but I'll have to paste at hands I'm doing it with the paste and just to make sure everything stays in place I push down a little on the component there we go all the others quite important you have good solder joints here on the shielding because that basically makes the mechanical fixture between connector and board otherwise you might rip off the connector when you pull on the cable cleaning up a little bit of leftover solder Now we have the signal and power pins on the USB connector left. Here I'll try to do them all in one step. Just one line of paste. And then I heat one after the other and hope sure hope that we are not going to form any bridges here if you have too much solder remains in the middle of two things just heat them both which usually sucks them out but as we're going to wash the board in the end with some organic solvent these solder leftovers will be washed away anyways and won't hurt anybody so why did we do this why these components we should have power 5 volts here from USB going to this filtering fair iPad which blocks high frequency components and another capacitor which uh, stabilizes the 5 volts again then we have this trace going over to the LED then from the LED to this resistor which is the serious resistor of the LED limiting the current through it and to ground so in with these few components if we did everything right we should have a LED coming on when you plug this into a computer let's see I hope you can see it, the LED is on, so what we did so far, most probably, is okay. 